Okay, and I think we're live. So welcome to the KCB community meeting. Um, just before we get started, as always, we have a code of conduct. Uh, please, uh, please follow it. Uh, please be excellent to each other. Okay. Um, with that, um, first point on the agenda. Um, so we, uh, a while back actually, um, I think one or two months already, it, time flies. Uh, we talked about moving the uh, meeting notes to Google Docs. And we now have a document for that um, because uh, we also still need to update the website and all of that. Um, I chose to open like essentially one last GitHub issue for the community meeting, but I believe I have transferred everything already over. The document should be public. Um, let me share the link on the chat already, and it will then also be published on the website and probably on the GitHub README wherever we can put it for, for visibility. Um, and then let me quickly check the community meeting uh, GitHub issue. Yeah, okay, looks good. Okay, then I will share the agenda documents. And um, that was already my first agenda topic, the new community meeting minutes. Um, uh, we we discussed this in, uh, before, so I think everyone is in agreement. Uh, but are there any any comments, any notes on um, the templates? Uh, the template is also just something that we put together. If there is information missing from it, um, then we can and should add it. But it was a first start to to get the documents running. Okay, um, then I believe that topic uh, is over. So uh, in that case, I would hand over to Stefan for a WeBase update. Yeah, so I, I put everything there. I reported in Slack in the last days. So uh, MJ did a great start with um, cherry picking a couple of PRs. I continue to accept. And the result is basically um, that we have two branches, one in Cube, one in KCP, both called Pre2, and um, they are kind of cleaned up. So they have nice um, commit uh, names, um, separated commits for different topics. And KCP start comes up. That's the most important milestone. Um, it's not noisy, it just stays there and um, kind of works. I mean, I just did manual tests for that. Next steps, obviously, um, unit tests in KCP. I haven't tried, so I will be out until Wednesday. So if anybody has time, um, just try. I have no idea what comes up. And after unit tests, of course, end-to-end uh, -end tests in KCP as well. Um, just as a reminder, we don't maintain the test in Cube at the moment. Maybe we should, and we come nearer to this goal, but at the moment we don't. Just don't try. They don't work. The only thing in Cube I try to compile is Cube API server. This was my, my um, test example. Anyway, so unit tests, end-to-end -end tests in KCP, and upstream um, those PRs, which are upstream PRs, which are basically all, but they, they are not carried, so they don't have this um, carry label um, in the commit message. So a couple, um, those which have a number, they have a PR with a number already. And there's one, Big one, this is the generic control plane uh, rebase, uh, not rebase, the so split um, in upstream. So splitting the Kube PR server into more components. It's done in my, my uh, work in progress PR. It's not upstream yet. I will do that uh, after the long weekend, I guess. Um, I tried with one. There's this big PR from Andy, um, which he got merged in April or so in uh in cube but it got reverted because there was an issue and uh i opened the pr today adding tests adding unit tests fixing things in the conversion um and there's a long thread in uh, in the machinery um where you can yeah, just read up 
um, last thread there in this channel. Um, yeah, this is the report basically. So I, I don't think it's really the fault of this PR. The PR just shows an issue with server side apply, which um, otherwise you don't see if you don't have webhooks. I'm pretty sure if you use conversion webhooks, you will see the same thing, even without this PR. So I have to uh, clean up a bit. Linter is uh, complaining at the moment, but I hope this will get in soonish. Um, some people seem to be out. So Jordan Legit is he's re responding, but he is on PTO, it seems. So I'm not sure when this will happen. This one is basically in our chain of commits in our fork. And it's pretty big and it's ugly if we have to maintain that, getting rid of that. Um, I think it's something like hundreds lines of code, a thousand lines of code, or so, so, something like that. So if we can, oh, it's even more. OK, <laughs> that's a lot. So if you go back, um, I posted uh, lines of code of our rebase branch, um, once including everything, which was, I think, 8,000 lines added or so, and half of that removed. If you remove the upstream PRs from that calculation, you get way below 5,000, I think. I haven't counted any details, so you can do the math yourself, the branches there. Um, but it's getting smaller and smaller, and I like that. So, yeah, that's the report. Okay. So you are from today until next Wednesday. Yes, I'm back on Wednesday. I think Tuesday okay, holiday so. in Germany. So yeah. Okay. So this weekend i'm on on call duty so i have to be in front of screen so i might pick up the unit test if nothing else pops up that's cool yes please yeah but i mean that, that sounds really great and the more of the generic api control plane that we can upstream the better right so get smaller and smaller i guess each rebase that's that's nice progress yes that's a goal. Okay. Um, maybe a quick, um, because we're talking about the rebase, um, do we want to cut a release of KCP after the rebase is done? Um, so we have release with Kubernetes 1.28 out. I guess so. When tests are green. Yeah, I think release and the same time Helm Helm chart release because a lot of breaking changes there too. Yeah, um, maybe. Yeah, sorry about. No, no, Once we do that, I think we're in a we're in a green again. For some time. Okay, sounds good. Uh, because it was just brought up, let's add it as an ad hoc topic, um, just as a FYI. Uh, the Helm chart for KCP had a breaking change on main. Uh, I changed things from hard-coded resource names to templated resource names, but there's no migration path because all the resource names are now very different. Um, so that's uh, that will probably or the, that that will mean that the next chart, the chart version we release, which would be 0 0.3.0, um, that would not be compatible with upgrades. But since we have, I think, a similar status in KCP itself, um, I think that that was a compromise uh, for, for getting the HAM charts up to more best practices. OK. Then is there anything else regarding the rebase update? OK, then let's talk about the next topic. And that is the CNCF sandbox checklist. So I think uh, this is the first time we're meeting, actually, since the uh, uh, proposal to join sandbox was accepted by the TOC. So I don't know. Someone has a little party hat. That would be the time. Uh, but yeah, how do we want to tackle the sandbox uh, the sandbox checklist can bring it up on screen as well. 
Yeah, this is the. I was thinking to start going through that, but hold myself for community meeting just because it's a quite a quite a big one. A lot of quite a few of those bullet points where you we just need to, as a community, we need to read through, understand, and see if they align. So if people could just go through those, and I don't know, should we just asynchronous synchronize in the in a in a sync mode, synchronize in a Slack, see which ones we take on. There's quite a few to add uh, bots, transfer domains, and things like that. I think we have time until December to do that. So, do people have any like proposals how we can tackle that, or we just do it on on ad hoc basis? You're yes, mute, Stefan. I saw I saw many projects which are obviously very late with this list. So, what is the December date? Where does it come from? I don't know. I saw it in the one day of once the sandbox voting ended. I think the there was added something. Uh, let me find it. There's another. There's another meeting, I think, in December. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. This or is probably it, right? Which means if we get it done until December, of course, that's great. Um, I guess yeah. if we don't, we are just slipping to the next one or something like that. Yeah. So it would be good to, to make it until that time. Yeah. OK, yeah, I mean, it seems that some of them we can already uh, just, I mean, we, we need to probably communicate that to CNCF, but for example, we have a neutral GitHub organization already, right? So some of these I would say are just like checkboxes that need to be checked because we already fulfill them. Um, the interesting bits, I guess, are trademarks and uh, transferring the domain to cncf yeah because... we we had we had contact to somebody a product manager from from red hat in this regard so we had a talk with her i know a few months ago uh sebastian and myself and we should um, contact her again so she promised that red hat people will do all this legal things That, that, that's great news. Um, but yeah, I guess the question uh, is, do we want to go over them uh, in the community meetings or do we want to discuss it async on the Slack channel and then maybe bring like bi-weekly updates to the checklist to this meeting? I would go for the latter one. And basically like, I think, Two or three community meetings down the line, we will already see the state was missing. I think we just need to engage earlier, identify the ones which could drag on. In example, the domain transferring stuff, uh, legal stuff, which needs Red Hat engagement. We might need to start engaging earlier, but most other ones should be quite quick. Maybe copying them into a Google Doc might make sense and keep notes like somebody goes over them. Yeah, I think that's actually a good idea. I believe that the folder that the community meeting minutes live in is public. Uh, I can create I can create a Google Docs to track progress. Alternatively, I guess we could also track it on a GitHub issue, but um, yeah, it's easier to, to assign tasks, I think, would and keep notes. On, on the Google Doc, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Then we can yeah, do that. Sense. Okay. Um Looking at the list, I guess um, 
yeah, okay. Um, let's let's track that in the document, um, and then we can also we can also mark the things uh, that we believe are already fulfilled and where we need to do work. And I think once we have that kind of discovery, then we can move on and start working on the things that we uh, that we can implement. Like for example, I believe there's an item to to add the sandbox logo to the website. So that's things we can we can do uh, or prepare. But just from my quick understanding, um, is the project already part of the sandbox or do we need to fulfill the checklist to become part of the sandbox? I use the wording, we got accepted into the process, <laughs> but okay. I'm not sure either. I think this okay. was uh, what was used in this message, right? If you go back, uh, Chat onboarding onboard. is the process, yeah. Okay, so it, okay, so this is part of the process to be like be fully part of the sandbox, I would argue. I guess. Ah, by the way, we were talking about deadlines. Okay. <laughs> so this was last week, so we have three weeks to go. Yeah. Okay. So we have one community meeting. <laughs> we have a status update. And okay, that, the... that, that changes things. That means we need to put more. <laughs> some planning. Stefan, okay. do you have the email for the Red Gap contacts? Like, we can. can I have to check. Um, just going through the list. Which ones would need require like input from from Red Hat? Domain transfer. Is domain in, under your hands or or product no, management? No, it's still Red Hat. Okay. It was and one then, of the issues which was not so easy at the time. And the trademark and logo. The logo is ours. But is the trademark, trademark even are, registered? We are not sure. There was a rumor that it was, but I doubt that. Okay. Fund of conduct, website, uh, website analytics, that's uh, all in our control. So from the list, it looks like the only the domain is what's missing, what we don't have control over. Everything else we can kind of change. And maybe some written agreement would be good from the Red Hat Legal, let's say a fine of this going forward, just to have it on paper. Yeah, when when we talked, it sounded more like that it will um, basically do all of that. So this is the contact we had. This is an L missing, two L probably. Two Ls. And she's on, on Slack, so we can contact her. Okay. Maybe let's start a small group chat and see what yeah. needs to be yeah. picked up. Do you want me to do that or or you can? Um, yeah, my question is, so Sebastian is out for longer, he's on PTO? Um, I believe the next community meeting, he should be back. I believe he is. But it's late, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about the details. So who wants to be involved in discussion with Karen? Karina, I think is the name, right? Yeah, Karina. Karina. Like I don't need to be there, but if if you like if there's something need to be done, like a no, you, paperwork, you, you I can, can be in and uh, help it. You can start if you want uh, a group chat. Involve me, like include me, mm -hmm. Karina and also Sebastian, I would say. So he he's aware. 
Yeah. Okay, and we'll do that. When something comes out, we will post to the channel or into the doc. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, yeah. So what about, so, um, do we have to assign anything or can we assign anything already? Um, I'm not exactly sure how we would do this, to be honest. Maybe we, maybe we look at other onboarding issues. And see so if we could just go quickly through the list and see if there's anything where things must be done, like the sandbox logo thing on the website. Yeah, okay. So uh, the whole understanding things here, I would say, okay, someone needs to read those and maybe give us a, a, the gist of it. Um, we have a written, I guess, open governance. Someone would need to check the criteria. I, th I think we use uh, templates from CNCF already. Yeah. Okay, even so better. Should be, should be good. Uh, Slack channel, yeah. Uh, yes, we have our own GitHub organization. Um, we would need to submit a project, uh, sorry, a pull request. I'm not sure to which repo, but I think that's something we can figure out. Um, then the maintainer list, also by a PR, also something that's doable. Um, the artwork, another pull request, something that I believe uh, maybe we should wait for. So you said that the the artwork is owned by us, right? I did the artwork at the time I was yeah. at Red Hat, but uh, it was always in the KCP repo, so I wouldn't care. Okay, then that that's already doable as well. The domain transfer, we need to discuss those. Red Hat, yeah. Uh, emails for the maintainers, yeah, we we can provide those um then trademarks okay let's skip that for now we can add those to to the github org that shouldn't be a problem yeah. either so um dco i believe we have enabled already um code of yep. conduct i'm not sure if we're using the cncf template already if we need to adjust something um i think we do but yeah we're simply check then the uh, footer, we can add that to the website. Um, maybe wait with merging the PR until we're, I don't know, pretty well into the process. I don't know, but I, I can prepare that. Um, uh, analytics transferred. I don't believe we have analytics right now. What is that? This is some Google Analytics stuff which you include. So, so. Oh, yeah, okay. I suspect we need to ask them to create one. So we can include it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it seems to be. And then uh, that I'm I'm I haven't looked into Open SSF yet, but I guess this is also something we can do. Maybe once the maintainers have been onboarded, and have access to the CNCF infrastructure. I don't know. Um. I believe that's it. This is stuff that the CNCF will help us with. So all in all, sounds doable, to be honest. I think so, yeah. Yeah, MJ, if, if you can start a conversation uh, with Karina, with me and Sebastian. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow in the that, morning. That's maybe what will take most time, and we don't control it. So. Yeah, tomorrow in the morning, first thing, the morning coffee. Great, thanks. Or no, she's in United States, so I should be doing this now. If there's something that you need from Kubernetes more urgently, um, you can also reach out to me, but I'm not sure what that would yeah. be, to be honest. But I mean, website stuff, right? This you can just do on your own. Um, yep. If anybody has time to look through the documents, like this code of conduct thing, whatever, is listed here, all this paperwork we have to put into the repository. And I think we have taken everything from CNCF, so maybe it's really no work at all, just checking. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, great. for example, here they even say adopted version of it, if we have like minor differences, I believe. I think we removed the word CNCF mainly. So. We can add it back in now. <laughs> yes, exactly. It was a plan. <laughs>
Uh, okay. Um, cool. Cool. Then let's take a quick look. We already talked about this topic. I just had a thought this morning, and I just wanted to quickly uh, talk about it. Um, well, we're now using CF project. I guess congrats to ourselves. Uh, the KubeCon Europe CFP is open since a couple of weeks again. And I was just wondering if people were thinking about handing in the KCP talk, if we wanted to coordinate that a bit um, so we don't cannibalize each other, um, or if there are no plans so far. I might do uh, have another attempt on generic control plane. I tried for US, it didn't work. So. Let it try again. Okay. Um, cool. Um, uh, uh, that's that. That's a topic that's much bigger than KCP. So I don't think a KCP talk would conflict with that. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm thinking about handing something in, but I'm not sure if uh, if I can find the novelty uh, from I believe two years ago. There were a couple of talks. Um, so. Let's last, see. Last year. Yeah. Last year as well. Okay. Okay. Um, one thing, sorry, something about the sandbox checklist. We should maybe add to our own checklist that we write at least a short blog post for the website about joining the sandbox. Uh, or at least prepare, prepare blog post. We, we, we are not fully done yet. Uh, but something we can publish once everything is fully official. I think that would be nice. OK. Is there anything else we should be discussing? It doesn't seem to be the case. Let me take a quick look if we have something to triage. But I am i don't think many new things came in. Let me find the link. That's actually something I should be adding to the community meeting notes. Um, we have uh, we have three new issues actually. So or four, I can't count. Um, this one I can quickly I can quickly say uh, I forgot to guess put it into something. Uh, it just like our tests are rather flaky, and that's not. I, not necessarily because the tests itself are themselves are unstable, but I don't know. Someone needs to take a look, so I added it to the backlog uh, to okay. maybe remember it. Flaking linter is good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Then we have bug cannot sync delete namespace action. Okay, this one is older and it's TMC. Uh, so let's move it to the backlog, and we might want to revisit migrating the TMC issues to, to its own repo. Uh, yeah, Mike? I think we have a similar issue in um, Kube Stellar. Uh, I think there's a really a fundamental question in the Kubernetes world about uh, keeping track of why namespaces exist. I'm not sure. I can follow what, what what you mean with why namespaces exist. Yeah, maybe it's easier for TMC, um, right? In, in, in Kubernetes in general, uh, you know, is, is something wants a namespace to exist that already exists, it just goes merrily along its way and uses that namespace. Uh, it doesn't record, right? We don't keep track. We don't have something like a owner's. Um, oh, I, I mean, see. It, yeah. Right. I think in TMC, we are recording that, right, as an annotation. Yeah, TMC is a little easier because um, you're really making stuff exclusively for one purpose, um, yeah. right? For for Coop Stellar, we're really saying we're kind of merging um, what's being requested from several uh, sources with what's already there for maybe other reasons. Uh, so it's there's no one exclusive owner in our view. Yeah, I think the question there might be if you 
if you want to uh, take ownership of things a bit like forcefully. So you track on the KCP side if you own something or if you believe that you own something or if you want to track on the uh, physical cluster sites through annotations or something that this is owned by someone specific. Yeah, and in the Kubestella world, the problem is, um, so it's not TMC, um, and you know, we want to support managing clusters that have stuff you know, from the Kubernetes world in general installed, and general stuff for the Kubernetes, from the Kubernetes world you know, can make or start using namespaces at any time for any reason without recording that fact that that, that, that stuff is, cares about them. Yeah, it's a. I, I, oh, I guess in this case, yeah, about this issue, um, it's probably some finalizer, something blocking it. So maybe it's a good question to ask. Is this is still relevant, June 9th, uh, 6th, actually. Yep, yep, that's. Uh, and that's probably a good question. The YAML of the namespace might tell you why. Um, and maybe, and the KCP version you are using. It's TMC, so it's obviously an older one. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, just so we know what it is. But yeah, let's see. Um, should we move to the backlog after asking, or should we keep it? No, backlog is fine, I think. It okay. comes back. I mean, you will get an application for sure. <laughs> I will. Um, then we have our KCP workload sync command does not work with EKS, uh, AKS, GKE clusters. Um, yeah, that looked, I, I feel like I've seen this issue before. It looked like there was a DNS or a networking issue. Like if you can see here, there are some IP addresses involved here apparently, but they are not fully given, but this potentially looks like, yeah, a, a configuration problem. Um, and there was an answer to this already, so I would just move it to backlog and, and see if it gets a response eventually. Yeah, at some point we'll need to do quite a big housekeeping. Yeah. Uh, and this is also um, multi-cluster, so we add the TMC label and then we can go on many ways on that. And then there's one last from you, Mike, about the kubectl vs commands. And uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I think it. So the, the last couple of comments, I think, really connect it to a larger issue. Um, so let me kind of explain the context. Right? We have. Uh, we want to be able, we have a Helm chart, right? As, as KCP does, right? So suppose one installs this in a kube cluster and then wants to access it from within that kube cluster and also wants to access it from something outside, right? I mean, suppose this is, you know, on EKS or any other cloud um, and you've got clients that are outside the cloud, right? And you've also got clients that are inside the same kube cluster. You want to support both. Um, and the way I've done it so far is go ahead and you know do KCP start without any particular consideration for this, and then take the kube config file that KCP start produces produces and edit the server URLs for external clients to put in the domain name and port you know that they use to come in the front door from outside the cloud, um, and that works until they do kubectl ws tilde. Um, at which point the workspace plugin um, edits the kube config file and puts back in the IP address for inside the kube cluster. 
this reminds me, I think there's something in Cube um, which takes the incoming domain name, like in, uh, the, the HTTP server knows the domain name the client uses, right? So it can identify whether it's outside or inside. Uh, and we could build something which then returns a different home workspace domain. So I noticed that KCP explicitly, you know, started inherited with inheriting all the command line arcs of Kube API server, except it deleted one very relevant one, um, which was, I think, the one that's called bind address. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the issue I wanted to raise, you know, I think, I think, you know, the important point, right, is to support the use case one way or another. So if people are agreed that the use case could should be supported, okay, then the next case is, okay, can someone write up how? And if not, you know, let, let's fix it so that the use case can be supported. I think it should be. Did you try to use the host aliases in the in a Kubernetes world? Like we, I had the same problem, and I solved it by just basically aliasing hosts, like yep yep, whatever to have dot com to internal service address. So from the cube cube config perspective, it still calls yep yep dot com, but because it runs within the pod inside the pod outside KCP, the host aliasing uh, stanza in the pod can help you to route the traffic where it needs to go? No, I had not considered that. Uh, if you could put it in a, a suggestion in the, uh, you know, in the issue, um, I, I'll see if I can make that work. It's, it's like, I agree it should be supported within the product, but I got to the point where I just started using host aliasing and it just worked and like other priorities took over. Um, I assume that the Helm chart, though, doesn't do that yet, right? It does. It does do host, host aliasing? Yeah, yeah there, is a, there is a values configuration for that. Great. So if there's a suggestion for how I can get this use case working, uh, please write it down. I'll have to give it a try. Cool. Will do. Okay. I, I do think that it makes sense to think about this from the client perspective or from the plugin perspective overall as well because the host alias is our way to get it for working but maybe what stefan described should still be supported in a way um but yeah uh for now i think it makes sense uh, if there's a workaround uh, that can help mike i think that's good and i would move it to backlog for now could we make hold off on that until i test whether it actually works Okay, sure. That Thanks. makes sense to me. Okay. Then, any other business? Okay. Then, thank you very much for joining. Uh, I will create the document to track our checklist process progress and talk to you all in two weeks. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.